Today is October the 19th, 2017. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University. And today along with me is Stacy Delano with the Stillwater Public Library. And we are here in Stillwater to talk to Elnora Lindsay Sanders. And this is part of our Spotlight in Oklahoma featuring the Washington School and African American community here in Stillwater. So thank you for inviting us to your home. You're more than welcome. Let's start with learning when and where you were born. I was born in 1939, Route 1, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Route 1. <laughs> was there a box number or anything? Or just Route 1? Just says Route 1. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have brothers and sisters? Yes. I had, my mother had, had six boys and turned around and had five girls. Wow. So I came from a family of 13 because my father had been married before and he had two sons by his first wife. Mm -hmm. So all together she was the mother and father of 13 children. And where were you in the in the lineup? Oh, I think on my birth certificate it said I was number seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> they had one crossed out. So I guess since it was six boys and three, two girls, three girls ahead of me. Two girls ahead of me, so that would have been six, seven, eight. I would have been the eighth child, wouldn't I have not? Seventh or eight. Do you, do you need to get it? We can pause if you need to get it. Let's let it finish. Okay. <laughs> I can't even turn it off, then it goes so long. Where was, where's Route 1? Route 1 is east of Stillwater, and I'm going to find out where that is because I would like to be able to go there. I remember that. I remember the place. But to get to that area, I'm not sure what road to turn off. And did your family own that property? Heavens no. I'm sure they did not own it. I don't know what they did, what they did or didn't, but I don't think so. I think it could have been I don't know. I've never really, really heard them say, but I know when my parents moved to Stillwater, she, my mother bought a home. So, but I don't know. So we were so young mm -hmm. when we lived there. Yeah. Till I don't finance financial stuff. You know, they didn't discuss with us, and and I think that I don't think that they owned that property. And but I can remember. I can see the house just as plain as clear as if I were there today. And I would love to be able to go back just to that area because I'm sure the house is not there. Yeah. And what were your parents' names? My mother was named Birdie, Birdie Viola Lindsay. And my father was named Willie Burnell Lindsay. Okay. And what was your mother's maiden name? Vic. V-I-C-K. And had they been born in and raised in Stillwater themselves? Uh, my mother was born and raised in Langston around that area. My father came from, his father came from Mississippi and uh, from Africa. And then my father came from Tupelo, Mississippi. Okay. So we go to Tupelo, Mississippi every now and then. I have a real good girlfriend that lived there. Cool. So I've been there several times. And do you want to rattle off the names of your siblings? Sure, I can do that, starting with my oldest. My oldest one that I knew of, my father had the two boys. One was George, and one was, uh, I can't think of his name. We never met the oldest boy. But, and, and so that kind of went away from me. But anyway, there was George. There was... Uh, L.T. Luther Tucker Lindsay, there was Joseph John Lindsay, there was Chester Phil Lindsay, there was Abraham Lindsay, Abraham Lincoln Lindsay, named after Abraham Lincoln, and then there was Mitty Carter, which was a Mitty Lindsay, and, and Christine Lindsay, and Elnora Lindsay, and Willie Ann Lindsay and Helen Jean Lindsay. And you know, isn't that funny how I cannot remember what my oldest brother's name was? I didn't ever know him. But we knew uh, the one that was named George. 
In fact, we just went to his wife's services about three weeks ago in Oklahoma City. Hmm. Well, what did your father do for a living here at Stillwater? My father was a farmer. Okay. I remember that so well. Mm -hmm. And then he helped with uh, Dr. Puckett uh, cleaning his office and stuff. And he did a lot of work. But I don't know if you remember. I know a lot of people in Stillwater remember the man that was a medical doctor named Dr. Puckett. Mm -hmm. And he just about took care of all of my dad's kids when we moved to town. Well, were you born at home or in? I'm or, sure or, I was born at home. Oh, yeah. I can remember my baby sister being born at home for sure. Okay. So I'm sure I was born right there in that same house. And did we say what year? Do you remember? Did, uh, let's see. Um, that my baby. No, the, that you were born. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Okay. Uh -huh, Nineteen thirty-nine. Okay. And uh, it's two. It's a, a sister under me, which is Willie. She's two years younger than I am. She's seventy-six. And then Helen, I saw Helen being, not being born, but I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> and did your mother work outside the home? I'm assuming not, if she had to take care of so many kids. My mother did work outside the home. I remember when we were living in the country, which my other sister, Willie, don't remember, but I do. They did a lot of picking cotton and stuff. I can remember the house so well. There was a cotton field over on the side, and there was a great big pond to the right, and Great big cellar where they would, you know, do their whatever meats and stuff, and we used to go play in that cellar. But uh, I, I, I just, a lot of this stuff, I just don't get rid the years, you know. So, mm -hmm. but that's part of life, I guess. Kind of go back and then you forget where you are. Do you mind if I go back to the sister's birth that yeah. you remember? Yeah. Um, was there someone there to help your mom? And, yes, it was. And how did that work, I Okay, guess? well, let me tell you this little story because it's so vivid in my mind. Uh, my oldest brothers, uh, I remember my older couple, two or three of my brothers were there. And I rem and my mom used to say all the time that I was... Uh, came into the world holding her finger, so she knew she was not going to be able to get rid of me. <laughs> this is what she used to tell me and my older sister. So anyway, I wanted to see her. I was crying for her. Me and I can remember Willie, which is two years younger than I am. And we was in this little chair, these little chairs, and we were outside of another room. My mother had taken her in this bedroom, and we could hear the commotion, but we couldn't see her, and I started crying. And I told him I wanted my mom, you know. And I remember my brother coming in. He said, okay, mom is okay. And, and you can see her in a little while. But right now you just have to be in here and be quiet and, and quit crying because she's okay. Well, I thought she was, you know, not going to ever come back, you know. And so anyway, I just kept crying. And so then after a while, I heard this little thing say, ah, 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 you know. And so, anyway, he, my brother came to the door and he says, okay, now, if you be, be real quiet and in a few minutes I'll, I'll come back to you in just a few minutes. And so, anyway, we sit there because, you know, that hearing that noise, that little baby crying, we didn't know what was going on. And after a while, he came and he had her in his hands and he said, isn't she beautiful? We're going to call her queen. My mama did not name her queen. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the, the, the remembrance that I have of my sister being born. <laughs> and that's the one right there with that picture. She passed away. I'm so sorry about that. Yes. So a, mid, was, a, mid, a midwife was there? Or do you know, do you know if a midwife was yeah, there? Yeah, it was a doc, It was a man there. A man? Yeah, it was a white guy there in, dressed in black. I can remember that. So she did have somebody there. Now what he whether whether he was a he had this black bag with him, so he had to have been a, a medical doctor or something, a yeah. uh, midwife or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wasn't no midwife, but I think my mother said my oldest two sisters did have midwives. Mm -hmm. But I can remember my baby sister having a doctor, and then a doctor evidently delivered me because of my birth certificate. I can show you my birth certificate. I have it. And it says Route 1, and it had MD on it. 
So. <laughs> well, was this sister born at, at Route 1 as well, or had you already yes. moved by then? No, was she was there? born at Route 1 so also. And then my parents moved to Stillwater a few years later. Because I think I was like five or six. Because, see, I'm just, let's see, it's two years apart of our age. So I was, my sister's two years younger than me. So that meant that I was five years older than my other sister. Before you moved to Stillwater, mm -hmm. would you happen to have any idea where all of your older siblings went to school? Sure. I know exactly where they went to school. Washington School. So they came in from Route 1 to Yes, Washington. to ride the bus. I rode the bus. I rode a bus to school for a while. First grader yeah, right was, that time. Yes. Yeah. We rode the bus, and I can tell you who the bus driver was. We haven't heard that. What's his name? Mr. Eli Slade. Eli Slade. Yes. And would it only be um, children who were African American that the bus picked up? Yes. That was the only one that lived in the country that we saw. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. And there were other kids who went to Washington who lived out in the country. It was. And they lived far on down the road. Uh, and and later, I want to find out if they can direct me to where it's at. Because I want to know. But I don't know if they remember either. <laughs> So when you when you moved into Stillwater, where did you live? Uh, my mom had bought a house down on 12th Street. On 12th, okay. Uh -huh. Closer to the school. Uh, uh, right down on 12th, 12th and, and, and Jefferson. Our house just ran right into that house. So and you I'm haven't sure. ventured too far from home right now. Right, right. <laughs> I have not. But uh, I used to travel this street a lot because they had a grocery store in the alley. And so we would go to that grocery store quite a bit. Do you remember who owned the grocery store? I don't know who. During the time when we were there, I could get that information for you. Do, uh, I think but, I'm mostly interested in finding out if it would have been an African-American No, heavens owner. no. Okay. No. That, and, okay. In fact, and I'll just tell you this right quick, and I don't know if you're going to ask me. There were no blacks living on 9th Street at all. That's right, yeah. There was a geographic area that blacks lived in only. And can you tell us what that sure. what that was? Sure, I can. That was 10th Street to 14th. That was um, West Street to Adams, to Jefferson, because there were no blacks on Adam. There was no blacks on Duck. So this was the geographic area that we lived in. And could you venture outside without too much worry? Well, I tell you what, we had everything in our community that we ever even dreamed of. That's the honest to God truth. We had good times. And whenever we ventured out, there was always some negative remark hollered out or something. Mm -hmm. So we've been through that part of it, that. But you know what? Because we were all taught that love always is better than hate. And, and I came from a very religious family. My father was a deacon in the church. My mother was a church mother of the church. And so they just did not, they taught us to love. We had to love each other. My mother used to say, the only way that you can have friends to play with at this house is that you get along and love each other. Mm -hmm. And we're a very close-knit family. Well, you had mentioned that she bought the house. Was 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 she the one in charge of the money? My mother was in charge of everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. <laughs> well, and number one was because my father was such a kind-hearted, such a loving man. And That's okay. He let her do whatever. And she was such a good mother. So there was no problem. Well, when one of you got in trouble, who would do the discipline? My mother. <laughs> my dad my dad never laid a finger on me. And and how would she how would she take care of it? She'd maul your head or 
get uh, uh, some straps. Our dad would threaten us, but he never, ever whooped us, ever in his life. Because he would say, you have to do what you're supposed to do. But we were hard-headed, too. That's just part of life. But I had the best parents in the world. I would not have traded them for nothing in the world. Just They were just good people, kind people. Loving, taught us to love and get along with each other. And our brothers was the same way. You get along or you don't. You get along or you... So our brothers just stepped in to... Uh, there's a word I want to use to say that whatever mom said, that's what you better do. You know, and, it, and so we rebelled. I did. A lot of times, because I wanted to do what the other kids were doing of me, you know. But really and truly, as I think about all of it, I know that they wanted the best for us. Because our father could not read, but we taught our father to read. Did you? We sure did. Mm -hmm. And before he passed away, he could read the Bible. He, he could not read when he, in his younger days. But my mother was a very intelligent lady, she would go help out to Langston where uh, uh, Howard Hughes and all of those poem readers and all those, and when they needed extra help, she would go to Langston and help them. So she pushed education. My mother wanted you to have the very best. Well, since we're back to education, let's talk about Washington School a little bit. Yes, okay. So you went there first through... Uh, I went there first through ninth, and I tell you what, I didn't graduate from there, but I enjoyed everything about Washington School, every teacher we loved. We had to respect whether they did or didn't. There was no discipline problems at Washington School. And you know the reason? Because when our parents told us what we had to do and how we had to act. That was carried through all the way down that road, not just when you got to the school. And they would tell each other, uh, the parents would tell each other, hey, did you know such and such was doing <laughs> such and such and such? And they told a lot on us. The other people that was along the way, we had to respect all of those people. We couldn't pass and not say, good evening, how are you doing? They say, hey, didn't you, I know your mom don't know you didn't speak. So it was kind of like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Because we had a village raising us. Everybody was interested in the well-being and the safety of us. Well, do you remember some of your teachers? I remember every one of them. Okay, let's, let's hear it. I remember <laughs> every one of them. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Watkins, Mrs. Watkins, was our, you know what, I was wondering, what else did Mrs. Watkins teach? But she taught piano in, I think, first grade or something, and uh, music. Okay, and then Miss Ruth Haskins, she taught art. I used to could draw. I loved to draw, and I got away from it. But Ruth Johnson, which was, yeah. Ruth Johnson Haskins. She was our uh, art teacher. I took art. Mrs. Benford was our math teacher. Mr. Watkins was our football coach. Mr. Lee A. Ward was our principal. Mr. Ballards was our shop teacher. And I cannot for the name, I mean, I kept trying to, th I can see his picture, but I can't think of the man that taught music because I played an instrument that was a saxophone and started out to learn it. <laughs> Quit, though. But anyway, uh, that and then we had uh, Miss Clay was our homemade teacher. Uh, let's see, am I missing somebody? Mm, let's see. What else did we have? I named Miss Clay, Miss Benford. I think Miss Ward was the librarian, if I'm not mistaken. 
I think that's what she was. Was she? Mm -hmm. I think that's what she was. And I'm trying to think of some other, Mr. Mr. Ballard, Mr. Watkins, Mr. Ward was the principal. Miss Clay was our homemade teacher. Did I say Miss Clay? Mm -hmm. Miss Clay. And then Miss Bimper was the math teacher. Mr. Ballard was the shop teacher. I don't remember the guy. I, I can see his face, but I can't remember his name right now. And I, I, I can't think of anybody else right now. So through first through ninth grade, mm -hmm. did did those teachers pretty much stay the same then? Yes. People stayed. Yes, they did. All of them stayed. Miss Keys was the typing. Miss Keys was the typing teacher. And as I kind of go back a minute, Miss Miss Keys taught te uh, typing. And uh, yes, they they just stayed. I don't remember any teacher really really leaving. Did while they? I was did there. they live in the community? Now I know Mrs. Uh, Mr. And Ms. Ward lived in the community, and Miss Bimper lived in the community. Miss Clay, but you know I'm trying. To, I don't know where Miss Clay lived. Ain't that funny? I don't remember exactly where she lived. But we had some tea and Miss Crosley. Miss Mr. And Mrs. Crosley. Miss Crosley was the first grade teacher. I should never forget her. And mm -hmm. Mr. Crosley, and Mr. Then Crosley was the first was the principal before Mr. Ward. Right, because okay. Mr. Grayson was the principal before Mr. Crosby. Mr. What did you say? Crosby. See, that was my older brothers had Mr. What did I call his name? I just called his name. Grayson. Mr. Grayson. But see, he was, we didn't know him. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Grayson from my older brothers was here. Then that was their principal. And then Mr. Crosley and then Mr. Ward came in. You almost forgot Miss Crosley. She was the first grade teacher. <laughs> but it's funny how you time kind of, as you get older, your memory don't hold everything you and you mine remember quite a bit. <laughs> and you, remember, you remembered where they lived too, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you you dodged those houses if you didn't want to hold on. Well, one thing about it, uh, no, we didn't because really and truly, that they gonna hear about it anyway. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's just the way it was here because it was such small. But for it to be such small area, it was compact. We had everything. We had everything. Have places to eat, and we had, the, we had a malt shop. We had two grocery stores owned by African American. Yes, residents. Mister Haskins owned the grocery store that was on the corner of Twelfth uh, and Knobloch. Mister, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think his name. His name went out the window with me just a minute ago. Mister Freeman. On the mm -hmm. one at Tenth uh, and Knob Block, we had grocery stores. We had two grocery stores. We had four churches. We had two Church of God in Crisis. Two. Yes, one lived, one was right in front of our house on Twelfth Street, oh. and the preacher was named. Uh, let me get it right now. Because this, this goes way back. I might need to call Willie on this. But anyway, it'll come to me. Then we had uh, the other homeless church where it is now. And we had Mount Zion on mm -hmm. the corner of, uh, not where it's mm -hmm. at now, but on, on 12th Street. On 12th Street. Mm -hmm. No, 11th Street. Yeah. 11th and, and, and what is that? Now Block? I think so. 11th and Now Block is where Mount Zion was. Now I have a picture of that church somewhere. When it was in the location when, before this. Right. Time. Oh, I would love to scan that. Well well I, I can I can dig that up because I have a And was there a Methodist? It was a Methodist church and Mr Slade, Eli Slade was a minister and he was the minister of the Methodist Church and the Methodist Church sat right on the corner I'm trying to get these streets right. On Tenth and Ramsey. Okay. That that was the that was the Methodist Church. Two holiness churches 
a Methodist church and a Baptist church. Now, the Church in God in Christ, uh -huh. one of them became Lawson's, Lawson's Temple. Temple. It was owned by the Lawsons. But then there was another Church of God in Christ. That one was on right off of uh, where we lived. Uh -huh. On We lived on 12. And you just crossed the street and it was located right there. There was a hole in his church right in front of our house. Oh, then now that and there was Mr. Chapman. 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 Okay. I had seen designations of the churches that people went to and mm -hmm. we wondered why it had the CG right. and CGS. So. Yeah, okay. right. Well, that was where that was, right? We mm -hmm. could just cross the street and go to his church. Mm -hmm. And we did that a lot of times when he had special services. Now, was that in... Um, in a church like it was facility, in a building. or it was, was it in more of like a house? No, or? it was it was a little church. <clears throat> it was built like a little church. It was tiny, but it was just built like in it was in the in our community. And you mentioned a malt shop. We had a malt shop owned by James Judy. Uh, yeah, uh huh. Sorry. Do you remember hearing that word? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was located on. Um, I'm I'm getting these streets all. That that's okay. okay. Uh, that <laughs> one was. Let's see. That's this is Jefferson and the one over Washington. It was on Washington, right off the off of Washington, Twelfth and Washington. Yes, by the malt shop. We had three or four little uh, places where you could go dance. Mm -hmm. And how old would you have to be before you could go? Well, you could sneak and go like I did. <laughs> <laughs> you was not supposed to go <laughs> until you <laughs> till you were a little bit older. Well, they had places like Miss Lena's. You could go there at 12, 13, 14. She didn't care. She was an older lady. She just had a building, and she opened it, and it was nice, clean, fun, and and people went and they bought candy and ate and, and pop and drank pop and, and danced. Now that was for the younger group. And then they had a place that was, uh, you could go Big Boy Brown. Mm -hmm. That was a little joint that we went to and enjoyed going to. Then later on they had barbecue places. Lee O'Connor had a barbecue place. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else had uh, and I don't know if you remember Bud Carter. The Carters had a beer joint. Mm -hmm. Little a few years later, they they allowed him to have a, and it was really a nice place for old people, older people to go to. Mm -hmm. And then when the store went out, they turned that into a juke joint. Now this is where I do believe Eskimo Joe got their name, the juke joint. That's what they used to call this. <laughs> That's that's the all it's known by the Jew jump. You going to a Jew jump night? Well, yeah. You going to a Jew jump night? Yeah. We go there and dance, you know. So, <laughs> so what sort of um, music would they play, and what sort of dances would Honey, people do? We danced. We did any kind of dance we wanted to do back in them days. We did the hookabuck. We did the. <laughs> We did the slow dance, and we did, I mean, you know, that was just a popular thing. But the songs that they played back in those days had words that had meanings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but today, <laughs> I don't know what they be saying or what they play. So it was a different, it was a different type of music. And would it be on a, just a like a record player? Or no, it would be one of those. They had one of those machines that juke, played. Yeah, block, yeah, one juke. of those juke blocks. Jute joint. <laughs> yes, why they had a jukebox. And did they ever have bands come into that? No, we never did have bands come in. We just had that. We we we, we never had band. And, and and one thing about it, I wanted to say, we did have one black police officer. Oh. And then we had one good white police officer. And I want to put that in there because Mr. Murpool... And you can look his name up. He was a white police officer. You, he knew everybody in the neighborhood. And you could call the police department 
And Mr. Poole would get on and he said, what's going on? Well, let me come down there and see about it. Because usually the thing that happened was that people would drink a little bit too much, you know, something like that. Mr. Poole would come and talk to him. Okay, now you need to go home so you won't get in trouble. And he communicated. He socialized and he knew people. He got to know the people in the neighborhood. And and to us, that meant a whole lot. Because there was not a lot of going to jail and putting you in jail and stopping you in this and doing that. and So it's totally different. It's mm-hmm. totally different now. When did that start to change, do you feel like? Uh, after a well, you know, it wasn't so, so bad because when they integrated, see, I didn't go to the white schools. And, and, and it wasn't because I didn't trust. It was because I was uh, hard-headed got in trouble and got pregnant and my mom wouldn't let me marry the guy. But they were the best parents in the world. They loved this boy and they took care of him. They helped me with it and everything. So during that time they were getting ready to integrate. My sisters didn't have any problems with it. Mm. But I feel like I don't, because they would call you so many different things and then I had already given birth and I just thought, no, I'm not going to go through that. But it wasn't didn't have anything to do with with me experiencing it other than just up and down the street and you know you would be called everything but child of God. And so that put a stigmatization on a lot of things, you know. But then I did my brother said, "You know, you 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 didn't go ahead and finish your education." And that's what my mom wanted. She she wanted everybody to be. She wanted every last one of us to be educated, because she was a smart woman, and say you can do many things if you just get your education. And so I went back to school in 1970, and Art Berry, mm-hmm. who was my neighbor, wasn't my neighbor during that time, but he talked me and he said, you know, I said, you know, I went up there to apply for a job. And he said, okay, it was a teacher's assistant job. He said, did, did you graduate from school? And I said, no. He said, you didn't. And I said, no. He said, well, i tell you what. He said, you have to have your high school education or a GED to, uh, to apply for this position. He said, but i tell you what I do. He said, if you go and get your GED, I guarantee you a job. And I said, I was thinking, okay, he's just telling me this to get rid of me. And so I went on about my way. So I talked to my brother and he said, you know, you don't have no excuse. You got kids, you're married and everything is, but you, you shouldn't let that stop you. Just go back to school, it's just right up the street, get your GED and you have it out of the way. And so my husband said, well, okay, you want to do that? I'll watch the kids. You can go. So 1970, and I have it in there on the wall if you want to take a picture of it. <laughs> I went back to school and got my GED. Went back to Lincoln School the year following. Talked to Mr. Bear was still there. And he said, you have a job. And I've been working ever since. I worked at public school when Skyline was open classroom. That's been a long time ago. Oh. What well, made it open? I don't know that concept. Oh, really? Yeah. You didn't know about the open classroom at Mm-mm. Skyline? Did you? Mm-mm. You didn't. I didn't. They had they built Skyline and they nothing was in closure. Mm. Well, that would be noisy, I would think. Oh, you gonna have to go find out. You have to do some. <laughs> Yeah, they had an open classroom in here. But it didn't last forever. <laughs> but it, it happened. And I was working it during that time. And the the lady that I work with is still alive right today. And she can tell you every bit of it if you want to find out more about it. And that's Bernice Shedrick, which uh-huh. is a lawyer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, I worked under her at Skyline School. Mm. Well, then while we're talking about your career, just go ahead and take us through the whole thing. Oh, well, 
Did I did I get ahead of you? No, no, you're <laughs> fine. You're fine. <laughs> well, we can, we can okay. Then then after I did that, then you know I decided to. I've, I've had a number of different jobs, and and I had enjoyed all of them. But then I met a lady that just decided that she wanted me to clean her house, and I said, "Clean your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. I, thought, I don't know, but I, I did. I took her up on it. She's a very nice lady. But anyway, I went. I went from the preschool. Then, when I went to uh, uh, to the school system, then Head Start called me and asked me if I would work for Head Start. So I I worked Head Start for seventeen years, right down here, at Washington mm -hmm. School. I was center coordinator when the program closed. I went from teacher aide to teacher to center coordinator. When the program closed, that was my position. Mm. And so then I decided, my husband said, well, now what are you going to do now? You you just <laughs> determine you're going to work. Well, I've been working all my life, so I'm used to it. So then I went to OSU and worked the parking lot attendant for two or three years, you know, while I was back and forth just doing. Then I did a little, some housekeeping, then I worked at Whitehurst in personnel mm -hmm. services for a while, for about mm -hmm. two years. And my husband bought the laundry and then I helped him with the laundry up until he passed away. And so that, then I decided, okay, what am I gonna do, just sit at home? No, I went to the school and I said, okay. They said, they called me, They I didn't even go to them. They came up to the laundry and said, we wondered if you would come and help us I said, help you. And they said, yeah, we need somebody to help clean, to keep the school clean. You keep this laundry so clean. Would you come and help us? And and uh, I said, oh, my husband said, you don't need to do that. You, you, you're you doing just fine. You don't have to do that. And I said, but, you know, it just gets kind of boring just sitting here, you know. And I've been in the public school now ever since, part-time, custodian. Which one? Which, Stillwater High School. Stillwater High School. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the laundry mat that your husband? Cowboy Laundry. Cowboy Laundry. Is it Adam still? Perkins, it's still in existence, but uh, uh, my husband, uh, we got rid of it because my son said, no, ten day, uh, seven days a week, uh-uh. <laughs> he said, my, but my husband knew he was sick, and so he had already made arrangements if I didn't want to keep it to get rid of it. Because we never did own the building. We mm -hmm. owned the stuff that was in the building. Okay. And my husband had already made arrangements. And my son said, no, I'm not going to take that up because he was working at Mercury. So he said, no, I don't, no, I'm not interested. And what was your husband's name? Ike Sanders. My husband was an OSU poli police officer for a number of years. See his picture over there on the wall. <laughs> Somebody and just drew a portrait of him over on the wall over there. And how did how had you met him? How had I met him? Well, my goodness, who wouldn't meet a beautiful lady? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that conceited? Or is that conceited? <laughs> Not <laughs> being, <laughs> being honest. Well, I don't know. I mean, no, uh, we just met. He had been married before and had a son. Was he from Stillwater? He was from Texas, Texas, mm -hmm. Calvert, Texas. But he went to school here. Played football. My husband was supposed to have been a kicker for the Denver Broncos. And we moved to Denver. My husband said, no way am I going to live in no big old city. <laughs> <laughs> so he refused to take the job. I was so upset because I had family in Denver. Because I taught preschool for four years in Denver. And I love Denver. That's where my sisters were both at. So. so did he play at OSU? No, my husband didn't go to college. Gotcha. No, he didn't. He 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 went to and then went in the army. Yeah, my husband went to. I think he quit in the eleventh grade and went in service in the army. And a lot of younger men left and went in the service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them did not graduate or go. On. And and still, what had a lot of people in the community. And a lot of people left Stillwater because of 
it was too prejudiced, they claim. So a lot of people moved on. Because it was too what? Too prejudiced here in Stillwater. You, so during what time period? During that saying? time when we were young and growing up. And the older people, most of them just went on and left. When they got out of school, they left out of here. They said, hey, it's got to be something better than this, being called a nigger and racist and all that. And so, so many of them moved away. Do you mind if we go ahead and talk about that? Because, you know, as you and I talked, mm -hmm. we haven't necessarily, um, you know, people haven't shared mm -hmm. um, that as much. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay if we talked sure, about that? Sure, I would love to because really and truly it happened. I mean, it's, it's part of my life. Sure. You know. So what sort of, I mean, how young do oh. you remember getting said things to you. Oh my goodness. As young as if you crossed 9th Street and if you crossed 10th Street you were going to be called what you was not supposed to have been called. It's as simple as that. They didn't care what age you were or how little you were and this is why I do believe that black people right today is so protective of their kids is because we were in a geographic area where everybody was everybody's parent. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you didn't have to worry about my kids going across the street to play with somebody over there uh, because they know that people over there are going to be watching too and the people further down are going to be watching too. So it was just a thing that, a domino effect is what it was. Everybody in the neighborhood Says take a village to raise kids. They took that real serious. So it happened. They didn't care how young you were. They didn't care how beautiful you were. They didn't care what you did in life. They weren't interested. They just wanted to make you feel like they were superior over you. And that's it. And they got it. They got it across because we stayed in our neighborhood. Segregated. Yeah, it was segregated. So would people come into the black community who were white? We, if you was, we had one insurance guy that would come into the neighborhood. And I can remember Mr. Pooh, Mer Pooh coming into the neighborhood mm -hmm. quite a bit. Sure. But as far as just other people coming in, no. Now, our parents went out and would come back, but there was not a lot of coming in to not white people coming into that neighborhood. So were you able to like shop in stores that were shop, owned yeah, by white this, people? This not not without some very nasty looks or even this the the type, the saying of nigga, you know, or even on the face, the facial expression. But the thing about it is, is this is why I do believe I love shoes right today. It's because when, when we were growing up, shoes and things that we had, we, we valued them because we didn't have very many of them. We would put cardboard in the bottom of our shoes. We had to walk across mud and drag stuff with us and, and all of that. All of these things happened right here in Stillwater. And uh, there, you could go see, a long time ago, you didn't see white people at a rummage sale. Mm. Only black people. You didn't see any white people at no rummage sale. But you go now, they'll beat you there. But they, they, you just didn't see it. But we were, when we could afford to go and look, it was because of the need that we had not because it was just something we wanted to do. It was because we needed a pair of shoes, or we needed a pair of socks, or we needed a dress. And we learned how to sew. I have a sewing machine right now, and my daughter had one, and my granddaughter had one. So everybody has to have a sewing machine. Because we, we sewed, I, my sister that passed away, the one that was two years old, my, that girl could make anything, on underwear. That girl could, she was so smart. I had some smart people in my family, and and they could do so many things that was limited 
if you didn't really, really have the money to do it, they could do it. I had wondered because you had mentioned that there were grocery stores uh -huh. um, owned by um, people in the community. Right. But I wondered where you got your clothes. So because for the most part, for the most part, you from, yeah, piecing the materials, you know. And I don't know where people would get certain pieces of material. I don't know how our parents did what they did, you know, because we were young and we just, we don't know how they did stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, unbeknownst to me, we all survived it. You know, we didn't have a lot of, my, but my older sister used to say all the time, make sure that your socks are clean. When you take them off at night, I mean, my mother just had it all just down. It was just like trickle down. You tell them this and have them to do this and do that. And it was just one of those things that just fell into. She was a good delegator. Yeah, she was. <laughs> she was very much so. And so uh, my older sister was, and she, my older sister taught me how to cook. And what I didn't learn in school, she'd show you at home, you know. So it was just one of those things where we just enjoyed what we had, which was very little. Mm -hmm. But our mother cooked every day we had. And see that picture there? Every time I look at that picture, it just makes me think more about being grateful and thankful. Because we did not sit down at a table and start eating. We did not eat without the others. We waited till everybody was at that table and our father gave grace. Then we could eat. Well, how uh, how big was your table? It had we to had be a big really table. Big. <laughs> well, because, you know, some of my older brothers had moved away. They didn't just stay. They said, no, the Stillwater's not for me. My older brothers left. One moved to California. One moved to Virginia. One moved to Denver. I mean, that's what I'm saying. A lot of the young men left. Because they were Be treated that way. Yes. Um, do you remember any specific incidents of um, some heated run-ins or anything um, of, of people in the community being treated badly that were particularly memorable? That was ran away? That was... Or just for anyone, really. Um, that was against the white... Uh, that is that what you're talking about? It, yes, where you all, you know, anyone in the community was treated oh, yeah. badly. Well, <laughs> like I mean, you know, um, not 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 feel not uh with words, but physical. Yeah, or um, well, I you know I we don't know. We I've maybe heard maybe one cross burning, maybe. Oh, we used to have. They used to do that all the time. That wasn't nothing new. <laughs> Cross burning happened. Any anytime they wanted to cross burn, here in the here community, here in Stillwater, in the com in our community. And what would, how would they do that? We don't know how they would do it. We would just wake up some morning, and there would be a cross burn, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you see a fire, and somebody said, "There's a fire," and you, you know they'd been in got in their car and went on about their business. I mean, you know, we never, never really, really just knew. Exactly who was doing what, when or where. But we knew it happened because they would come to the neighborhood and do it. And then, you know, they would come and set the toilets on fire sometimes. You know, we had outside toilets. Oh. So did did you all, anybody explain or talk about the outdoors toilets? Well, I know a little bit about that, but not, oh, in, sti honey. not in still water. I think we had one other person who had mentioned. Oh, yeah, we had outside. Before they got into Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, uh. So all of that stuff, you know, we've been through. And they would set them on fire? Sure. They would, if, if, yeah, they would set them on fire. If they wanted to, they did what they wanted to do. They were allowed to do it. I mean, and because they weren't going to stay there and let somebody see them doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and then they would never know who did it. But there were some things that, that, that happened. Were there places... Where you couldn't be served, uh, uh, businesses that wouldn't serve you. There was a place, and I'll never forget the name of it. And the lady that owned it—I don't know if she owned it, but it was called Ann's. 
and it was uptown. And we had to go to the back door to order. You couldn't you couldn't go through the front door. Mm -hmm. But you could go around to the back and order a hamburger or whatever it is that you wanted, but you couldn't eat it there. You had to take it with you. So that was that was a place that sit behind, you know, where Central Drug is today. Mm -hmm. Well that place sit directly behind Central Drug Store. And it was a building. It was a nice place that served whites, but blacks could not go in. But you could go around to the side and order what you wanted to take with you. But, you know, those, those were... But, but one thing about it, I do believe that uh, all of the blacks that lived in the black neighborhood were so used to it and knew that it was not going to change and you accepted it because what else would you do? And this is one reason why I believe that their mother hen does so much is because they didn't want anything to happen to us. And so it was kind of like you got all these people that got their arms around you and and you got to be in this little in this little area. And even when you went to the park, you know, and I and I feel not not probably getting away from what you want to talk about, but uh when they we used to have to go down to on um, 14th to the park. See, we didn't have a park. They had a slide mm -hmm. and a merry-go-round. I can remember that way down on 14th. Mm -hmm. And we would love to go down there. That's the only place we could go to have any kind of fun, fun, recreation, fun, fun, you know, where everybody could get together and just laugh and play. Mm -hmm. And so when they put this outdoors toilet down here and this dog wagon, I just feel like. Lord and behold, it was kind of like a slap in the face to so very many black people till it was sad. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what we used to call home. And we had so many good things going on and so much love going on. And here they come with a dog wagon thing. And you know what? The only thing about it is black people won't say everything that hurts because mm -hmm. they would never get over the pain probably. But sometimes you have to just put it on the table. And it's a lot of us that don't like it right today, but we have to deal with it. So that's part of life. But we're experienced and old enough to know that some things are not going to ever change. It's kind of sad. <laughs> It's sad, it's sad that it's that way. Yeah, but well, that's right. And we know that there's a lot of good white people. We know that. But there was a lot of them during that time. Like I said, people loved Mr. Mr. Murphy. He came down here and he knew everybody. These police officers right now don't know nobody. Well, in the geographic area that you described earlier, is it is it still mostly white or, is, or no. mostly black or is it? No, it's all it's, it's now? all it's integrated like yeah. a big dog now. Yeah. They just moved all the blacks on out. When you know they had several floods, though you know that. Yes, and mm -hmm. you do you recall those pretty well, well? Do I? Yes, I do because when I woke up one one night. I think I warned the whole neighborhood that it had flooded because we were all asleep. And it was right. See, we lived right on the edge of Stillwater Creek because mm -hmm. we were right there on 12th and Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Stillwater Creek is where my father drowned. And so he had one fishing because he loved, he was a fisherman. And he was at Stillwater Creek when he died. Right there, drowned right there, Stillwater Creek. So Stillwater Creek, when it come up, we could be asleep. We would all be in that sleep, and we wouldn't know it was flooding. Mm -hmm. And you wake up and think that, what am I seeing? A look out. There's water up to here, up in to your house. bed. In, in the house. Yes. In the house. Yeah. That is a frightening. That will never leave me. That will be with me for the rest of my life. Because I woke my family up that night. My whole family was asleep. We were all asleep. 
But they called me such a busybody. I said, you're always trying to sneak out or something. Because, you know, I thought other kids were having fun. I wanted to go have fun. We were not al- I did not know that was not fun, you know. But I learned later on that everything, if I could learn from every mistake that I made, that's part of my life. Important lesson to learn. But I, but we had several floods, and not only did we have, I have pictures right now that I could show you. Just oh, haven't been five years ago. Your flooding in this area. Mm-hmm. When those uh, really huge floods happened in like fifty six and fifty nine. Mm-hmm. Um. So what would happen? The a large part of the neighborhood would be affected. Mm-hmm. So what would occur once a flood happened? We would have to walk out of it. We would have to walk out of it and get out of it the best way we could. We, and we walked out of it a many a night with water up to here. And go where? Yeah. And go to the American Legion. They had American Legion open downtown. You'd have to go up a flight of stairs. Nobody else have mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Am I telling too much? Oh no, you're uh-uh. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But that we would go to the American Legion and it was a flight of stairs that you had to go up and that's where you were until the water receded and then you went in and cleaned your house and you went back. Mm-hmm. And so did they have Co- like cots there you would sleep or? you know I don't remember no cots I kind of remember some little throw blankets but I don't remember cots so how long would it take to to clear things up well you know what it wouldn't take us too very long because we were excited to be back home we, we wanted to get back to where we belong as you may as well say mm-hmm. is this is what they were saying go back where you belong well that we were ready to go back so that we could be ourselves and do the things that we were comfortable with doing and not having to face all this other drama. And was there ever any assistance like in helping people get um, their I, houses back in order? Or I never remember any assistance. I remember that we were the assistants that did our own yeah. thing, that got, got it back together the way that we could. I don't remember ever any assistance, people coming in to help you. No, I don't remember it. If it did, and I can remember pretty good. <laughs> I, I No, I don't remember any of that. And what about the school when that happened? The school was underwater too. The school was underwater also. And a lot destroyed? Yeah, it yeah. Just, and, and it destroyed a whole lot of things that but if you go back to it, though, remember, black people didn't have a whole, whole lot anyway. And we were so used to doing with the bare necessities anyway. So to us, we were still doing good when we would get these things back together. And, and, and see, we didn't even have running water for years. We didn't have inside toilet for years. People didn't have all that stuff for years. So how would you get, because I had heard about people having, you know, an outdoor toilet. Mm-hmm. So what would you do about water, like getting well, water? Well, we packed water for years. What does that mean? We, that means that okay. people that was fortunate enough to have a outside faucet, mm-hmm. then they would be good enough to let you have water. And we called it pack water because we take buckets and pack water until everybody in the neighborhood could get water assistance in their homes. And so were there a lot of families that didn't have water, the water like that? So that's how you would even get like your drinking water. Right, right. Until everybody got uh, wealthy enough for, should I use the word wealth? (laughs) Got fortunate enough to have water, that was it. And especially for bathing. And we bathed after each other. Mm-hmm. And, and my mom said, that's that's the way it is. Yeah. I, we, I would bathe after my, my older sister would bathe, and then the other sister would bathe. And so we bathed after each other. She said, well, at least you have water, you know. And uh, she taught us to try to be really clean. 
and and uh so uh that's the way we got you know we just had to do do what we had to do babe out to each other so when was it would there be like a water day or would you do the water every day we would or? do the water as we needed it as we needed water and they would let us get the water now, don't ask me how, who was paying for this. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe water wasn't very expensive during that time. I don't know. But uh, I know we had neighbors up the street. It was about a block away that we could get water from until we were able to get water. And my mom worked very hard to try to get everything right. I mean, she was a go-getter, go-doer. And eventually we got inside toilet and water a tub and, and I mean we just we cherish those things mm -hmm. how about laundry hmm. how about laundry laundry we didn't have very many clothes so we didn't have to worry too much about that black people didn't have many clothes many shoes that's why I'm a shoe freak right today and and my sisters when they went to Denver and she both of them had really nice jobs and they would send me shoes I said don't send me another pair of shoes <laughs> but well, your foot is small. I saw this cute pair of shoes on my seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I got to be the shoe person. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we, we we managed. Do you remember your first washing machine? Uh, Let me see. I'm trying to think now. Um, I can remember a rubber wood. Yeah. That was our washing machine. Did you hear anybody tell you about the rubber wood? Other people have, but no, you can if you wish. Oh well, that's if they good. did, that's fine. I, you know what, I can, I can remember our first uh, washing machine, and I, we just thought everything was just that heaven had opened up <laughs> because we could put it in them and you could wash it as long as you want to. I love them right there. Wish I had one. <laughs> you know, you could just wash and wash and wash and wash and wash. So yeah, I remember. I, we got a. We got a water, we got a washing machine, we got a toilet inside with a tub and a sink, and that to us was heaven. Was that um like before you were 20? Oh yeah, yeah, that was before like, I was 20. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And so when you all, I, I know I'm obsessed with this water idea, but mm -hmm. um, so what would a person do, like have a bucket of water, yeah. like in the kitchen, and uh -huh. people and a would dipper. Yeah, you had a dipper, the water. and you would. They, you had one special uh, container that you drank out of, and you had a dipper. And I don't know if you've seen a dipper or not, but you've heard of them, I'm sure. And you take that dipper and you would drink out of it, and they would always keep a cloth. You wipe it off and you put it down. Now, what about electricity? Well, we didn't have electricity when we first moved down there. My mother worked real hard to struggle us to get it. But when we did get it, I can remember we didn't have TVs, mm -hmm. but we had a radio. I can remember the the program called Mr. and Mrs. North on TV. I mean, on radio. And we used to listen to that all the time. Mr. and Mrs. North. But as far as TV, we it was years before we got a TV. What about, what would you do for light in the evening before electricity? You, uh, well, you know, it, we didn't stay down there a whole, whole long time without lights. But uh, we didn't have the water and everything right mm -hmm. then. But we didn't even have, uh, we didn't have uh, telephones and all that stuff. You know, yeah. we didn't have... We had the bare necessities. If water was the necessity, then that's what we had. We didn't have any TVs, all that kind of stuff. It was years before people in the neighborhood got a TV. In fact, I remember the first lady that had a TV. I remember two ladies in our neighborhood that had TVs that we were allowed to go see. That was Miss Hattie, Hattie Cook, sweet lady. She had a TV and she had a log outside. And so what she would do was she would put that TV, pull it over in front of the door, and we'd all sit on that log outside and watch it like it was a show. <laughs> then we had another lady that had TV, Miss uh, Miss Pearlie. 
And during that time when TVs first came out, they rolled. I don't know if you've ever heard them talk about a TV rolling. The first TVs, a long time ago, they rolled a lot. We didn't know that there was a little mob in the back. <laughs> so everybody be looking at TV and they'd just be rolling, you know. <laughs> and and, and it finally somebody said, there's a little knob in the back you're supposed to take and turn it and keep it from rolling. <laughs> um, we must have watched TV, I don't know, rolling for a long time, you know, to show you how dumb we were. <laughs> so, but it, and it, it was really and truly, I don't, I don't regret and it, we just, I don't know, maybe it was because this, we were too stupid to know that things were better. Uh, too young to know that things were better. Or just didn't realize that things were a lot better until it happened. Would you raise your own chickens and hogs and such? My, my, my dad did. We had, a, and, 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 I, and I'm glad you said that because... We lived next to a barn. The man raised, he had his horses and his cows and his bulls right next door to where we lived. My dad had pigs, he raised pigs, chickens, and yeah, all of that took place. We didn't have to do any of this, but my mother and my dad did all of this kind of stuff, you know. But when she, when we moved to town, they didn't do a whole lot of that, but they did have some chickens and, and you know, my mom knew how to kill them. And, and then then some of the people had uh, worked for these people that had farms that would give them stuff and then they would uh, bring the leftovers and give them to different people. So, you know, that was part of our life. So you yourself never had to wring the neck? No, I never did wring a neck, but I sure did eat the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I never learned how, I didn't have to do that. But your mother was the one that did it at your my house? My mother would do it at our house. Not yeah. the brothers? Or? Well, my brothers, like I said, they as they got older, they, they just were. decided that still water was not for them. They started to leave home. Well, would she collect the, gather the eggs and sell them or trade them for something at well, the store? Well, she, she never traded them for nothing else. Uh, the few that we did have, uh, she would keep them. But, see, that didn't last a long time after we moved into okay. town. So, okay. you know, st things kind of started looking up years. Well, uh, for supper time, what would you normally fix? What would be your typical dinner meal uh my mother would use we had some kind of chicken she was a good cook my mother was a good cook and i don't care what it was you were going to eat it whatever it was but we had we had a lot of chicken we had a lot of and i can remember them talking about brains and i never wanted to eat them and i said no i'm not going to eat them but my dad told her one time he said hey, you know the girl ain't gonna eat without no meat we we'll to have to have some kind of meat here <laughs> and I love meat today. Meat and potatoes. Uh, I don't care if vegetables, sweets. I was going to offer you all some juice, and I didn't even do that or something to drink. But anyway, I'm not a big, just give me some meat and potatoes, and I'm, and I'm good to go. Tanya always asks what your um, very favorite meal that your mom made, would make. Uh, is some kind of chicken. She Any would... particular fried chicken, baked chicken, broad chicken, any kind of way she can fix chicken. She did more than one way then. Oh yeah, my yeah. mom could fix up a recipe that you had never heard before. <laughs> and it would be good, and you ate it. Was she good at pies or cakes? Oh yeah, and she made a sweet bread that didn't have a lot of sugar, but it was the best. It, and, and my sister said she made a really good raisin pudding. Mm -hmm. Bread pudding, my sister. I wish I knew how to make that. I said, well, get up and try. <laughs> but I said, I'm not a big sweet eater, so I can pass, you know. But she ain't, ain't going to do nothing. She ain't going to try to make no sweet bread. So you went up until the ninth grade and then had to had to drop out? I did drop. I didn't have to. I just you, left. You just left. Because I was not going to the, to the other school because the kids talked about the treatment that they got. And I said, I don't have to be treated like that. And I wasn't going. So I didn't go. But then, you know, really and truly, I needed it. I needed that. I needed to 
get my education. Do you have any memories of Mr. Ward? Mr. Ward was a very kind man. A lot of people didn't. I don't know if they didn't have not said good things about him. I didn't ever have anything bad to say about Mr. Ward because Mr. Ward stressed getting your education. That's what most of those teachers stressed. Do whatever you have to do to get your education. But you know what? It's kind of hard now that I'm older to, I'm an adult, and I could say to my grandson and my great-grandson, get your education, get your education. And he might say, okay, because I might need a good job. But then you you go back to when we were young, and you'd be thinking, why is all that necessary? Because white people are not going to hire you. I mean, thoughts like these come into people's visions and minds. I mean, because if you're in that in the black race, you hear a lot of things. And... And it's not stuff that's made up. It's stuff that they haven't experienced. And so it just causes you to say, but I tell my kids, you're going, I don't care what. <laughs> and all of my kids graduated, and I have five kids. All of my kids graduated from right up there at high school. My oldest son uh, went to college for four years and came back and, and experienced with drugs and alcohol. So it was... To, to me, at least he got it, but what did he do with it? But the thing about it is, is that I don't judge it. I just say, well, that was part of life. But my daughter was the first black cheerleader at the high school. And what was her name? Cherry. Cherry Jo uh, uh, Sanders. And when was that? Oh, have mercy Jesus. Why is she going to ask the old lady, when was that? Well, uh, what year was that? What, ooh, my what, goodness, what, Cherry is 50 something. Oh, my goodness. Lord. What year was she born? So, and then we can she was born in, uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. 19. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's laughing, but honey, when you get my age and go through it, but she's born in 1960. So it probably would have been in the mid seventies, sometime in there. Uh huh. And I got, I got, I have pictures of her in her thing. But yeah, she, my niece was the first alternate, but Cherry was the first permanent cheerleader. Cherry is in C H E R R Y. Right. Like the cherry, the fruit. Uh huh. Yeah. So when did you marry your your husband? Oh, way before Cherry and them came into the world. <laughs> and let me see when we get married. It's been so long ago. 50, let's see. 90. Must have been in 55 or 56. And what did you marry here in Stillwater? Uh, we married in Newkirk, Oklahoma. Why there? Because in Stillwater, we did, well, we just went there because a lot of black people went to Newkirk and got married. And I don't think it cost very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, when we went to Newkirk, I mean, we went to Ponca. No, we went to Newkirk. We went to Wichita to get married, just to get away, just to go. And we found out you had to have a, a blood test from that state. And uh, we only had it from Oklahoma. So we didn't get married up in Wichita. So we came back to Newkirk, Oklahoma, and found a little man that married us in a church right there in Newkirk, Oklahoma. I think that's the so, county seat for that county, so it probably would, would have been a good stop. Yeah. Did you have a? Did you make your own dress or what? No, what I did had you on a cute red dress. Red. Yes. <laughs> Just had on a nice little red dress. And did your parents know you were going to go? Yeah, my really? mother, my my father was not is not living then during that time. My well, mother knew. You didn't elope. You just. No, I didn't it. elope. No, I didn't elope. She, she knew. You couldn't fool her anyway. I mean, she was just that, just a wise old hand. You couldn't fool her about nothing. And then when did he pass away, your husband? Uh, let's see, it's been 16 years ago. Okay. Do the math. I'll let you do the figuring because my brain ain't right there, right there. 2001, 2000? Two. two. I think it was 2002. And how old were you when you lost your dad? Uh, Let's see, I think I was about... 
1718. So did things dramatically change after that for your family? Well, not really because my mom was the one that was the one that just kind of took things over anyway. Sure, we missed our dad from being there. and But my dad was... Uh, he had some medical seizures, and so we we took care of him a lot. Uh, and they never did find out why he had these seizures, mm -hmm. but that's what happened to him when he drowned, is because he went into one of those seizures, and passed away, fell into the creek and passed away. So my mom knew that he was not the healthiest man on earth, but he was a worker, good man, and everything. And so we all just kind of pitched in and did what we needed to do. But my mom kept working when my father passed away. Because, you know, during that time, they didn't get very much assistance anyway. Mm -hmm. And then when after that last flood, then they came in, Urban Renewal came in and moved them to, and she lived where the NC Audie, I don't know if you've heard of the NC Audie man, had a, had a big flower shop right there on, right around the, right on the corner on 10th. In fact, the address is uh, 913. And you're saying N-C-R-D? N-C-R-D was his name. Oh, oh, last name Art. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. N-C-R-D. But in, that's all one name. Mm -hmm. He had gotcha. a big flower area there and a home with a big flower area where he sold different plants and all that. Mm -hmm. She bought his house and moved right around the corner. Which that house still stands there today. And urban renewal cost all of this. Uh huh. Shift it shifting around. Yeah. So that would have been. Was that in the seventies? That I don't know what year that was. And so what were? Um, but it was after these floods. So many floods. It was after so many floods, and they just got. So what were the biggest changes that came about? with urban renewal what sort of well we thought that it was a pretty good change because people were moving from the such flood. a low area up a little higher where it didn't flood mm -hmm. so to us that was a major step but now whether the the grown people that was moving all this stuff and going on thought it was the same but I think people thought that the Urban Renewal was doing a pretty good job for moving people to high land where it didn't flood so because we went through a lot of floods. Yeah. So. so for the most part, it just entailed moving people up to the higher land. Right. Not necessarily like sidewalks and streets no, or things right. like that. Right, just, just moving you up to high land to me. And they, they might have been going to do that later on in life, you know, where they might have would have added more streets and sidewalks and all that. But they didn't do a whole lot. They didn't do, they wouldn't even come down and grade the street down there. We lived on Dirt Street and tw on 12th Street, you know, that was dirt. That, those streets were dirt. They weren't paved. They had trails. They didn't have sidewalk. <laughs> we went to school with trails. We, we didn't have you know, we, we had to cross over into a, a cross a fence to get to where it was halfway dry, <laughs> let alone, you know, having sidewalks and, and concrete. That happened years later, you know. And do you happen to recall about when they finally did paving on the streets? You know, I, I just don't remember exactly what year they, they paved. But it was so nice just to see some pavement, you know. I'd recalled hearing someone saying that it was pretty pretty much later than all the other areas. Yeah, that's what it was later because it sure wasn't back in those days, you know. Was there a, were there a lot more houses? A um, lot more houses because let me tell you what. Where they are now? No, but people back in them days had two and three houses on one lot. Oh. See. And I don't know if, 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 you know, somebody else remembers this, but like my mom had three houses on one lot. Hmm. 
like a say this like this, in this right. lot here there would be like three different yeah. structures yeah there. right so that was all through the neighborhood people just didn't have that one little one house there was always maybe another building another call them huts or whatever you want to call them but that's the way it was back in that day so it was congested mm -hmm. it was a lot of houses it was a lot of people in this geographic area yeah. well in the two other houses what would be would she rent them or would it be no like rent who was going <laughs> no oh. kids lived them she had enough kids and grandkids and great grandkids okay. <laughs> You know, and my mom was a family person. I mean, she believed in family. And another thing, talking about blacks, we didn't we didn't think about a rest home. Rest home did not even cross our thought. Take care of you. Our, our parents were stay stay in the home if they were ill, if they were sick. It was always some kind of way to take care of those people. You didn't hear of many black people going to a rest home. Like you hear now. People just, well, well, I'll go to the rest home, you know. But you didn't hear that back in them days. We kept our mother at home. She died at home. You know. she say, y'all can put me in the rest home. You all work? Don't. No. We kept her right there. She died right there at 7 on 9, 9, 9 West 10th Street. And then what happened to the house that she was? Well, it was left to us, and, and and we kept it for years and years and years. And finally, when the finances got sold, so, you know, you just say, well, hey, the heck yeah. with it. This yeah. is it. Let it go. It's beautiful. I mean, I went down there and worked in it, and I kept it for a few years. And I told my sisters, I says, you know, when these college students move in, they tear your house up. And you got to go back and redo it. I said, uh, it ain't worth it to me. So we sold it. And so at some point you moved away from Stillwater? Mm-hmm. And, and then you came back from, uh, about when? Well, we we lived in Stillwater for years. All of my kids. After you were, married, okay. Yeah, after yeah. I married. We and lived up on 10th Street. Okay. Right in a little duplex. Uh and you know, there was a few blacks that owned duplexes later on in life. Talton Johnson, he owned one right on the corner of, of uh, 10th and Washington. I know you heard Lee O'Connor had the barbecue place, oh, uh -huh. the black man that had the big barbecue place. It wasn't big, but it was big to us. And he had a, a duplex right across the street from there. And his brother, Talton Johnson, had... Uh, one, Billy had one on 10th and, what street is that? Right off of uh, Knob Block. And we lived there for like about 17, 18 years, me and my husband and kids. Okay. So we lived in Stillwater for years. Because he just didn't want to go anywhere. But I wanted to get out of Stillwater simply because I had been here. And and I loved Denver, and I loved Colorado, and and I had two sisters up there, and my mother wanted to move there, and she never did just move, but she spent almost all of her summer up there with my two sisters, because she thought it was such a gorgeous place, she wanted to buy a home there, and so we just kind of played it by ear, and some of us stayed here, and some stayed there, but we were still an awfully close family. So when did you come to have this house? Uh, we've been in here, what did I say, 40 years, 40 some years. Uh, when we moved from up on 10th Street in the duplex, my husband bought this house from Willie J. and Dorothy Lawson. Black people owned it when I bought it, when my husband bought it. And I've been here ever since. It was already already bricked. So And so go ahead and if you would for the for the tape tell us tell me about what, what Art Barry said to you about the, the house. Oh, Art Barry told me that he said, Do you know the history of that house? And I said, No, I used to pass it going to the store, we go to the store, you know. And he said, 
That house used to be the library that set of town on 6th Street. And I forgot what street he said. that. And so I said, it did. He said, yeah. He said, I wondered if you knew that. I said, no, I didn't. I said, but since you said that, with all the open space, I can believe it. That's what I said, and we both laughed about it. And he said, but that's true. He said, that house was moved, a frame house moved. It was the library. Mm -hmm. And the structure of the house, and especially with the study upstairs, I just said it had to be in. I mean, you know, you didn't. It's just, I guess that's true. I've never checked into it, but I take his word for it. He lived across the street right there for years. And he'd watch my daughter play out there in the yard. <laughs> and he'd say, I stand in the one and watch her play out there in the yard a lot of times because she would jump and know oh, she was she was active, you know. He said, I see why she ended up being a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah. Mr. Barry is a sweetheart. He was he was a good neighbor. When you were uh, growing up, what were some of the predominant um, African-American families, ones who kind of played leadership roles for the community? Uh, I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. I think it, just about everybody in the neighborhood did because that's the type of neighborhood we had. There was not one specific family that stood out more than another because it was like a village. Mm -hmm. Everybody was your everybody was your mama when you left home. Everybody was your daddy when you left home. If they said, "Hey, you better not let me hear you talking like that," they meant that. And so we knew that. We knew that the kids were told, "Okay, such and such to be watching. Such and such to be watching." And so they had that fear in us. Well, who were um, who were some of your best friends when you were in school? Oh, my sisters were my best friends. And then I had some other friends that lived in my neighborhood. My cousin lived right next door to me. She passed away just a couple of two or three weeks ago. Uh, my mom's brother lived between the barn and my... my uh, my uncle lived on one side of the barn, and my mom lived on the other side. Mm. So they were family, because that was her brother. And so we were good friends with our first cousins, but we were also best friends with our sisters, because we, were, we grew up together, we were raised together. My brothers, most of them were gone, but we were in the household together. And so... Uh, uh, the girl across the street, Gladys Terrell, she passed away. She was one of my good friends. So we were friends with just about all these kids because we would see them on a daily basis almost. We played with them. We went to school with them. I don't have any bad memories about anybody uh, in school. I only can remember having one little spat in school with a girl. Other than that, I never got into a fight with anybody. We just wasn't allowed to. Well, would you take your lunch or would you have lunch there? No, we, we are, uh, they had lunch and I was trying to get my sister to ask her the other day if she remembered the lunch because I remember the one building and they had lunch. They had these little buildings on the side, mm -hmm. but she couldn't remember that. And I thought, man, she's two years younger than I am. Am, am I imagining that? I, I think that the wings... Yeah. yeah. And the wings were later. The wings came later to that gotcha. school. Because they cooked some kind of meals. In, and I can remember the food would smell so good back in those days. But uh, I don't... She didn't remember. She remembered the wings, but she didn't remember before the wings. So, I don't know if that's something that I need to find out for sure, but I can remember the food, the smell of the food that was coming from this. It seemed like they had some little build, a little building or something that they cooked in mm. before they put that wing there. But it's been so long ago, you know, to 
that they're kind of fake. The um the Washington School building that's there now. Mm-hmm. Is any of that part of the like part of the building? Is it still there when from when you went? There is a package right there behind you. Would you hand me that? Can you get that? No, it's laying over there on the box. Yeah. Give me that and I can show you right quick. If you don't mind. It's a, I want to show you. Because, see, sometimes I think I want to be correct and stuff. Thank you. But I, and see, I just happen to have some of this stuff out. And I can go to that. And let's see. Because when we were trying to get the building to be, uh, Oh, see, this here, see the school. Mm-hmm. Okay, now these, is, do that have the little air, the little part around it, the little wings on it or not? You know, I just don't know what the central part was. The, okay, the central part was that one building that stands behind the two wings. Okay, and so that part was there when you yes. were in school. Yes, and okay. this is why we were trying to get it to be, uh, what is that? Registered. Yeah. Because that building is a hundred years old and older. The uh, the wings were put around it later. Okay. But that one building was there. The midpoint. Yeah. And uh, they claimed that they had went through this once before trying to get this to be whatever they call the it. Na- on the National Register. Yes, mm-hmm. the National Register. Yeah, I couldn't even think of that right then. But uh, I think she said that they waited too late, but the people had tried to get, do it way before then, but for some reason it just... Oh, does it have a gymnasium? Does it, it have a gym? Uh-huh. It has a gym. Did it have a gym when you were there? Mm-hmm. Sure. I have pictures of pictures taken out of the gym. Yeah, they played basketball and were really good at basketball. So yeah, they played they had basketball, had a real good football team and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister was one of the, you know how they pick queens for the football thing? Yeah, my sister was one of them, but Christine, her picture's up in the museum up there. Sure. At the, uh-huh. So we went up there looking the other day. Uh she and a good friend of ours. Yeah, and another girl. We were all, everybody that went to school down there almost had to be friends because, I mean, we didn't have a choice, really, not to be friends. And about how many would be in your class, your your grade Ooh, level? Oh, my goodness, it was a bunch of us. I got pictures of that, too. It's probably about phew, 15 or 20, oh, okay. maybe. Pretty good size. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not compared to what stuff is today, but that's oh, I is. know mm-hmm. some of those kids that come in. I work at the high school, and when they talk about, they had freshmen coming in. Up, what well, they were trying to get freshmen in, they wouldn't have had nowhere to put them. Mm-hmm. But they seat to seat up there already with what they have. But you know, I enjoy working there. The uh, most of the people people are very nice. Keeps you young. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they are they most of those people there. Are nice people. I have not had a lot of problems. Thank, thank goodness some things have changed, right? Yeah, some things have changed. And But you know the honest thing about it is our kids grew up with these kids. We didn't. Our kids, we grew up with the black community. Our kids grew up with the mixed community. Because they went to school with the white kids. I mean, you know, we didn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't, but my sister, my two sisters did the last couple of years. But these kids went from kindergarten all the way up with the mixed group of children. Do you wish now, other than the education part, of mm-hmm. course, which was very important to you, mm-hmm. do you wish you had had that experience of um, going to school in a integrated environment? No. I don't, not be, not because uh, I don't feel like that I missed out on anything. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, 
whether it would have changed anything in my life or not, I can't say because I think I've been fairly happy with my life. I don't don't have a lot of regrets, and I've worked in, in some people's homes that unless I could have gotten a better job that paid better, but I've had better jobs that didn't pay better. So, like, when I started working at Whitehurst, you know, I had to wear heels and dress up, and I was making $3.35 an hour. I can go to work at the school and not dress up, and I can wait three, four times more than that. I mean, so to me, I just, you know, I might have could have had a, a, maybe a, I thought about going in the Air Force. That's what I wanted to do. But my mother, ooh, Lord, have mercy, no way. Hmm. But I would, I think I would have had a career in service because that's what I wanted to do. She said, no, women didn't go in service. No. But she was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't want us to go. <laughs> well, did your brothers, any of your brothers go in? Oh, yeah, all Sorry. of my brothers. All of all my brothers. brothers. All of my brothers. Were any of them old enough to go for World War Two? No, my he, father was in, uh, I don't know what my husband was in. He was in the Army. Seemed like he was in a war, a Korean War. Korean, probably his age. Yeah, right he was in the Korean there. War. Yeah, my dad was in service too in some, don't ask me what rank, but yeah. Most of the boys that, black guys, went in service to get away. Mm. Say, hey, come out of here. And were there a lot of the Stillwater fellows in, in the neighborhood went to the Korean War? I don't know if they all went to the Korean War, if they just moved somewhere else. But a lot of them moved somewhere else. Yeah. Just, just. So you would, if you were born in '39, you would have been eight or nine or right in there when World War Two was over. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have any memories of people coming back from war at that time? No, not not really, because uh, uh, I remember. You know, we didn't really, really know that much about have connection with all that kind of stuff. Sure. But I remember working for a lady that her son was killed in the uh, was that Japan War. And uh, I can remember her name, Toby Green. He was a baseball coach at OSU. Mm -hmm. And she lived right up there, on, right around the corner, not too far. And they lost their only child. And I remember... She grieved so long for that boy, and it just it just did something to you, and I just always felt so bad for him. And it, I heard they had sent a little thing out, and I think it came from Oklahoma City. I kept the clip for a long time. They said anyone that knew of anybody that was killed in the Korean War, Japan War, I think it was the Japan, wasn't it? said to send the name to them and I was going to send Toby's name in and I couldn't find the thing when I was going to do that. So I thought, because parents, his parents was already dead when this came out. So I thought, boy, I hope they had Toby's name on there. He was a junior. Was he a junior? Yes, yeah, Toby Green. I thought, Lord, have mercy. But I'm still here, so. And, and you've been here to see a, a president elected that was black yes <laughs> and I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to get up and move but I'm on camera huh I went to Washington D.C. my nephew took us to on a beautiful beautiful trip to Washington D.C. to Memphis Tennessee and to Washington D.C. so we got to go to the museum the black museum beautiful place. We enjoyed the trip. It was nice, but it was so many people there until it was sad. All oh, races of people. Mm. Never seen so many people in all my life, I thought. Gosh. The beautiful place. So we took lots of pictures. I have pictures of of uh, the uh, Martin Luther King statue. 
We didn't get all the pictures yet because he took a whole lot of them. So I know it's going to take a while to get them all. But we got some good ones. And then I got uh, a shirt with Mr. and Mrs. Obama. <laughs> and let me show you. Got to show you this. So you excuse me a minute. Let me show you this. <laughs> I have to show this because I know I'm on camera. But okay. <laughs> there you go. Now, who is that? <laughs> is that nice? Is that nice? Yeah. I said, my great-grandkids are going to see this. <laughs> so, I put that inside of that picture frame so I could preserve it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Probably never imagined living to see that day. No. No, not really. But I was glad that, and I'm glad that he did, to me, such a good job. That's what I'm glad about that he was chosen, given the opportunity, and he did it. And that makes me proud. Makes all black people proud, I'm sure. Well, do you remember where you were when JFK was killed? Sure. I'll tell you exactly where I was. Uh, uh, let me see. I think... If I'm not mistaken, I was at 521 West 10th Street when we heard that he had gotten killed. And talking about something that hurt a person, cause really and truly, in fact, I have some stuff that I'm saving for my grandkids for about him. He was to me such a, would have been such a good, president but just life taken away from him and uh, I think he would have been for unity mm -hmm. he would have tried to draw people together and I think he would have been really great at doing it I think he had the personality he had the the smarts the uh, ability to Pull people together, you know, to unify people. And so, yeah, I remember that quite well. And I, I can also tell you where I was when they uh, had put those things through, those airplanes went through the towers. 9-11. I was at Cowboy Laundry, and I could not believe that. Those things hurt. When you, I don't, I don't care what we went through as blacks, I think that most black people have a heart that want to do right, that want to do good, that want, that have been taught to do that. And that's just simple as that. We're just taught to do the right thing. So that means that we have a special place, I do believe, for sympathy. I believe that. Because of the things that we have been through that have put something in us that say, hey, this is the way to do that. It's back to your parents and grandparents. Yes, yes. I can remember my grandmother. My grandmother was a little lady from Irish. She was Irish. Little lady wasn't no taller than this. Had her hang down to here. I can remember my grandfather. He was tall and black and straight from Africa. Good looking, I thought. This man is so big. It was something about his bigness. And maybe it was because I was so little mm -hmm. that I just looked at this as if, oh my goodness. Do you know what country he was from? I don't know what country he was from. And so your grandmother mm -hmm. was white. She was Irish. She was Irish. And so how did they, do you know how they met? I don't even know how they met. I don't even have pictures of them because we had a cousin, first cousin, that moved to California and he had all those pictures and we all, but you know, you don't be thinking about stuff, you know, so we never bothered him about pictures and right today we hate we don't have a picture of our grandmother and, and was that your dad or your mom's that was my dad my mom's people were uh indian had more indian in mm -hmm. them 
my mom's people had more Indian than my dad's people had. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, they they about to <laughs> age, you know. But yeah, my 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 mother had uh, her mother had a lot of Indian in her. Which which tribe do you know? Honey, now <laughs> yes, sure is the wrong question. I <laughs> have no idea. I I I wouldn't even. Has her to guess? Okay. I I really I I don't I don't know. Or the one that was from that was Irish. Was she from? Had she been born in Ireland? We don't, don't know, know that either. Don't know that. We don't. We don't. And you know the thing about it is, is that people didn't keep things. I, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't have. Very, I'm just assuming they didn't have very much, so they didn't keep very much, and they didn't harbor like I harbor. <laughs> <laughs> well, did they live in still? No. Yeah, did my they? grandmother and grandfather did live in Stillwater the, for a while. Okay. Your yeah. Dad, your dad's parents. Yeah, my dad's parents. But I did not know. I never met my mother's parents. They died. My mother's, and I think this is one reason why my mom was so attached to us. It's because her mother died when she was quite young, and she helped raise her three brothers, which was older than she was, and they were so dominant over her and cared for her so much and they just pass it on down and where did you say that that your dad lived originally before Stillwater a Tupelo Mississippi Tupelo Mississippi mm -hmm. yeah we go to Tupelo a lot I have a girlfriend in Tupelo Tupelo is a pretty place that's the home of Elvis no Elvis lived there for a while didn't he <laughs> oh did, yes he did you know I, and you know what and I have his book too and I have Michael, I mean, when they were young, I have a book of Michael Jackson. When he was young, I have a book of, uh, of Elvis Presley. Those are antiques. <laughs> yeah, I keep them. They tell me that they're antique. I keep them. Mm -hmm. Well, we've covered a lot. Is there anything else you want to ask, Stacy? I could probably ask a million questions. Well, but if you do, you go <laughs> yeah, you you you've answered a lot for me. So oh, yeah. we've gotten uh, a lot of information that I didn't ha have before. Do you okay. happen to, just my last question then uh -huh. would be, too, uh, you were a member, your family was a member of one of the churches. Mm -hmm. And which church was the Church of God in Christ. Okay. And that would be Lawson the one Temple. that turned into Lawson Temple. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what happened to the other church? The little, the other little church, mm -hmm. the other little wholeness church? Yeah. Sure, it faded just like uh, when the floods and stuff came, it just went away too. Mr. Chapman, they passed away. Mm -hmm. And so the church just kind of... No one to take over? And no one took over. Okay, great. That's... I Same thing about the Methodists. No one took over the Methodist yeah. church after Mr. Slate left either that I mm -hmm. remember. So it was just the two left. That was the Church of God in Christ and Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Which is the only two. That, well, they do have one more today. They they just opened one not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Well, then my last question is, how do you want to be remembered? When, when history is written, how, how do you want to be remembered? Well... Really and truly, uh, I want to be remembered just as 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 being a good citizen. That that's 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 all I want. Just that I I uh, help somebody along the way, and that I'll just try to be my best, do my best while I was here. And hopefully, some of that will come out in 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 my kids that I've raised, and my grandkids that. So hopefully some of that will trickle down, mm -hmm. but just the, just me being a good citizen, and uh, that's that's all. Cause what else can I say? Mm -hmm. I've I've enjoyed my life. I've had a good life. Through it all, I've had a good life. I've been highly blessed. Well, I know I consider myself being blessed to be here and you having to tell your story with us. That's been great. Well, thank you. I hope I didn't disappoint you. No, you were <laughs> great. Thank you. Not at all. You're welcome. <laughs>